Hi, this is Howard, the Teaser King for football handicapping, football betting, specifically two teams, six point teasers. Um, I just want to talk about a way to bet the teasers because I just I have a certain knack and a certain way to bet the games, and it makes it successful and, and very lucrative for me. If you go to my site www.teaserking.com see the way I bet because I post my bets basically I don't hide I show you my losers and my winners I'm showing you everything and uh, basically the way I do it is once I find once I analyze the games and I use it's a you know it's uh, art and uh, what do you call it a little bit of art and a little bit of uh, science well the science is the technical part I look at the trends how teams are in different roles home favorite home dog and things like that and if you bet against them, because it's a teaser, it's minus 7, you go minus 1 or plus 13. And then the art is, well, wait a minute, even though the trend's there, they got guys injured, they don't need the game, they might be flat to look ahead, they, uh, you know, there's a lot of reasons just because the trend's there, you might play it, you might not play it. I'm not blind, I don't just look at the trend and say, yeah, that's it. So I'm very good at the art. But when I find the team, like last weekend, my lock was beautiful. San Diego getting seven and a half, and I bet it early because I knew when they were getting points on Tuesday, they were getting one and a half, two from Miami, that they would not be the favorite at the end of the week, that San Diego was going to be favored. And I love San Diego as a dog. San Diego is a great dog. So I jumped on it and bet the game on Tuesday. Had played them with New England getting eight and a half points. But what I did is I played them in more than one teaser. And I played that teaser huge, $2,000. Then I went on and played it with College Houston, another lock that I found. They were getting way too many points. So I played San Diego in two teasers. And if they win, then I, I'm really taking advantage of the lock. And that's what you've got to do with teasers. I then went on to play Houston in two or three teasers. I found Michigan State. I played them in two or three teasers. And then New England I had in two or three teasers, plus I played them with Denver. So I ended up with New England in like three teasers, San Diego in three teasers, College Houston in three teasers, Michigan State in three teasers, and so on and so on. And then when they win, you, you got all you need is the other side. You don't even need all the other sides to win. You just need some of them. Now, of course, every week, it's like pocket aces. It doesn't always win, but when you get them, you think you're going to. So I play it consistently. I always sit there and will play when I get the lock, when I get that strong game. I always pound them in three, four teasers. I vary the dollar amount. The one thing I learned when you play teasers, first of all, they're two-team teasers. You can play three or four teams. And the thing with the two-team teaser is if you play, let's say you play two teasers and you pick four different teams and you make them for $100 a piece, you got to go 4-0, and oh, and that's extremely hard to go 100%. Nobody can do it. I do about 75 to 78%, but I still have 25% wrong, which means if I play four teams for the same $100 and with the juice of 12 to 10 now, chances are I'm going to lose $20 on my four plays because... I'm not going to go four for four. So what I developed was, first of all, I don't bet the same amount. And the reason is it's because it's I know I'm going to have losers. And some teams I really like a lot stronger than others. For example, I love San Diego getting points and New England getting points. But I didn't love, let's say, uh, um, Pittsburgh was a home dog to the Lions. I like Pittsburgh, but since Pittsburgh's not as strong, I didn't love them and lock them. But I liked them a lot, so I played them, but I played them for less than the lock. And I put them with the Giants against Green Bay because Scott Tolzien was the quarterback. But I didn't lock it because the Giants aren't the same Giants. So because there's more risk, I played those in their own teaser smaller, a couple hundred dollars. And that's what I try to do is I vary my way. So as long as I hit my big game and I lose the other, had New York or Pittsburgh lost, I would have won the $2,000, I would have lost 300 and that would have been it, and I would have won $1,700. And that's how I look at it. It's, I, I, I know I'm going to lose some picks, so I don't want to break even. I don't want to just pick four different teams for $100 each. 
I win, I win three of the four, and I lose the fourth teaser, the fourth game in the teaser, and it's a break even, and I lose twenty dollars juice. That's why I don't bet them the same amount, and that's why I put the locks with a very very strong, even if they're not a lock like Denver last week, I will put them in more than one teaser. And a lot of things what I do uh, when when you play with me, when you take my bets, I will add bets Saturday and Sunday. If I play a teaser. Um, let's say I play a Saturday game. Let's say I take uh, Ohio State Saturday with the Denver Broncos on Sunday. If Ohio State loses, and I love, and I still love Denver because I wouldn't have played them if I didn't, I will then come back and play another Sunday team or another Saturday night team with them. So I will add to my bet because I really, really like Denver. I still want to tease them. And I'll do that a lot. Well, I will do that. Or I'll get a feel of the day if everything's going well early. And Clemson's winning, and the you know the Big East teams are winning, and Miami's winning, Florida State's winning. But I really like Stanford and Oregon, and you know uh, Houston. Then I'm going to come back and pound them a little bit more because now I'm winning. And if I have a good Saturday or you know kind of okay, and I really like the Sunday, I might add some Sunday ones. I did that last Sunday. I had a really good uh, Saturday, and then Sunday was coming. And Sunday was doing well. Well, at uh, like I don't know about three o'clock in the afternoon, I went and bet Denver, which was the night game with New England, which was my lock, and I bet another 900 on them because I was having a good day, everything was winning, and I had that good feel that that yeah, this, this Denver's going to do fine. I saw Manning; he's walking around, he's fine. I was a little concerned about him. That's why I didn't lock it. And then I said, with I got Brady and eight and a half points, nine points. That's forget it. They're not gonna. They, you can't. You're not gonna blow them out. And so I bet it again. And I'll just get feels based on the way the day is. I, I'm a lot of. Uh, I get good gut feels because I've been doing this for, God, I don't know, 40 years. So I can tell you right away. Well, I can look at the page without even doing my stats, and I know I'm gonna who I'm gonna pick. Uh, but that's what you do. You vary your amounts. It's very important. Not bet fifty dollars or hundred dollars on every teaser with two different teams. You've got to be able to rank teams and play the better ranked teams higher. And what's a better ranked team? A very good underdog. Any time you get Brady, Manning, Breeze, Rogers is a dog. You jump on them because they were very competitive and you're not going to blow them out. I had New Orleans against New England getting the points. They won, and last week New England's getting points. Anytime San Diego's getting points or Green Bay, it's an automatic play, and I jump on them. Uh, I also do that with San Francisco, although I let I let it go because they got too many injuries last week against New Orleans. But I would have won with it. But I laid away, and that's where the art comes in. I didn't want to get burned by Drew Brees. They're very tough in New Orleans, so I watched it. But normally I would have taken Frisco in the nine. I looked for strong dogs, especially in a teaser. You get over that seven points. The key is getting it under three and over seven and and under ten and the getting under the key points or over the key points. Once you can do that, um, that's really a key and that makes the bet bigger. Uh, if I got to lay 14 points in the pros, like Seattle was 12 and a half over Minnesota last week, it's too much. It's still got to win by six or seven points in pros. That's a lot. They did cover, but they had two late touchdowns. But if Seattle was seven point favorite over Minnesota last week at home, I, I'd bet the house on the game laying one. There's no way they were going to lose because Christian Ponder's terrible. But that's the point. So the point spread dictates how strong I like the game and if I lock it, as well as if I get a good dog, such as Houston in college the last two weeks, they're getting way too many points. So those are the keys you look at. And you get your feel. So again, bet differently. The one last thing. Winning the Denver New England part and the San Diego New England part last week left me in a dilemma. I had three thousand dollars on on New England and nine last Monday night, and I love New England and nine. But I could have trapped the game. And what a trap is to hedge my bet. I could bet three thousand dollars on Carolina lane three, and if they win by three, it's a push. Four, six, and seven, which are really good numbers, and even eight. I would have won both ways. And as it turned out, I didn't do that because I love New England and nine. I could have done that 
and had I bet three grand on Carolina, I would have won six grand because they won by four. So I would have won on Carolina, I would have won on New England. And the beauty of it is you can't lose the six grand because it, if you can only lose one side of the bet. If Carolina, if Carolina in four loses, if New England wins by ten, I still win the New England part of the teaser. So I still win the three thousand. Now the beauty of it is you already have the six points and it's a six point trap. And if you get the right numbers, which initially I did at two and a half, I had New England at eight and a half. So now you have three, four, six, seven, and eight, and they win. And that's what happened. But I thought New England would win. Uh, Carolina really hadn't beaten anybody. Even the win at Frisco, uh, they just stopped the run and Frisco couldn't do anything. But you got Tom Brady. You got a passing team, not a running team. So I thought it would be hard to stop them. And believe me, until the end, it was 20 to 17. If New England scores at the end, they win. So I really wasn't in doubt that I was going to win the nine. But the trap is a key part if you want to hedge and really win a lot of money. Um, you can't lose. If you bet two grand on each side, you can't lose four grand, but you can win four grand. And you, you know the worst that happens is if you you know you don't have to bet two grand on the straight bet. Like Carolina, I have three grand on on uh, New England. I could have bet 1,500 on. Uh, I could have bet 1,500 on Carolina. Not the whole three grand because I've already got the nine points. That's the gold part of the bet. So let's say I put 1,500. I'm going to lose, if, if New England wins, I, I win three grand and I lose 1,500 plus the juice. If Carolina wins, I win 1,500 and I lose three grand. So I only lose 1,500, not the three grand. I'm protecting against it. And or the way it ended up, I would have won 4,500, but I could never lose 4,500. So if you keep pressing it and you look for the right spread, you can middle the game and win both sides, but you can never lose both sides. So in that situation, the worst I would have done was lose 1500 because I would have lost the three grand, but won the 1500 Lost three grand in New England, won the 1500 on Carolina. So I would have lost, the worst case, I would have lost 1500 plus the juice of the 3000 But that's that's all I would have lost, but had had I had I trapped the game, which I did, I could have won 4500 instead of three grand. So you see how it works. I can't lose as much. I can win more than I can lose. And, uh, you know, it's just a food to thought. Now, if you really love the game, which I did, I wouldn't bet that much on it. Uh, it's kind of what you do. But, you know, let's say you want to, you know, oh, it's too much. You don't want to risk that much. Or you do want to trap it. You can, you know, if you got three grand, you can trap it for 500, 1,000, 2,000. You don't have to go the full 3,000. So just keep that in mind. But it is an excellent play. I've used it before. Uh, it's really good when it's a two or two and a half spread to take the eight and a half and lay it at two, two and a half. And then if, you, if they win by three or four and they're predicting, you know, it's going to be a close game if it's a two, two and a half point spread. So you can trap it. It's just food for thought. And if you want to do that, definitely do it with a college game Saturday, with a pro game Sunday, a pro game Sunday with, a, with the Monday nighter. Now they have the Thursday game, the you know, Friday game. So you could you can take New Orleans tonight, and you can play them with, uh, you know, uh, you know, who Miami on Sunday. And if you win tonight, New Orleans, then you can trap the Miami game if you want. I mean, it's all food for thought there. But that's that's other ways of hedging. So you can win both, but you can't lose both. And I, I don't know any other bet you can do that with, where you can win more than you can lose. It's it's a great uh, thing. You know, in the pros, I think it'll work more because a lot of close games in the pros. Their mentality is they're going to run up the score for the voters. Their mentality is win the game. If they get up, they sit on the ball and run the clock, and they'll make them use the timeouts, and the other team throws, you know, all that crap. Uh, so basically, there's a big chance that you can uh, definitely middle the games in the pros. And really, I would do it with the dogs uh, more so than the favorites. I think the favorite, you can get a blowout or they can win by a couple of touchdowns. But if you take a live dog like a San Diego and New England, uh, Baltimore, any of those teams, you can definitely uh, middle the game because the other team must be good to make them favored, and that would be a real close game. Um, so anyway, that's kind of some keys to betting teasers. Uh, they've been very, very successful to me. But I found out a long time ago I started doing this in 1975, betting teasers, and it's just 
you know, you just can't pick four games for the same amount and expect to win. It's not going to happen because you're going to go three and one most of the weeks. Occasionally you'll go four and zero, but normally it's three and one or two and two. And then you got to pray both losers are in the same teaser, where you lose it both, and you're going to go, oh, this is stupid. So if you do vary the amount and you do put that big game in multiple, now you will lose the big game once in a while. It's not, you know, it's not 100% you're going to win the big game. But generally, if you really know how to analyze it, or if you just listen to me, because I know how to analyze it, you'll you'll know the big game, and then you know your odds are probably 95% the big game is going to win. So you're going to lose 5% of the time, like pocket aces. But generally, you're going to win, and uh, you've got to look at the long run. I mean, there's going to be a bad week or two. It happens, but generally, once you got it down, and that's the beauty of my trends. Because I got the trends, I don't have a favorite team. I just sit there and who's hot? You know, one year it was Atlanta. This year it's Cincinnati. Next year it could be Minnesota. I mean, you don't know. You get an idea from the draft that they get a good quarterback. Uh, then you know what's going on. But generally, uh, you can see the change happening. And Cincinnati is a dynamite team this year. So you end up looking at them. Anyway... Um, that's how you really look at teasers and bet them and what you look for. Always want live dogs or if you're playing a favorite, they gotta really you gotta say that score. If you're if they're laying eight, you cut it to two. You're saying they're gonna win by 14 points because if it's gonna be close and you're only gonna win by a field goal or six, play the dog because the dog could easily win the game. So you gotta have a good mismatch <coughs> to play the favorite. All right, well, this is Howard, the Teaser King, uh, wishing you all a, a happy, uh, have a happy weekend, and uh, go win some money. All right, take care. Again, go to the site, www.teaserking.com. I got a big lock going this week, and my, my huge lock won last week, so I'm, uh, I'm in the groove. All right, have a nice night.